Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am Dr. Vijeta Shanai. I work as Assistant Professor in Department of Biochemistry, Kasturba Medical College, Manipal, Manipal Academy of Higher Education. Today, we are going to discuss the role of mitochondria in lipid metabolism. This is the structure of mitochondria. It has outer membrane, inner membrane. The space between the outer membrane and inner membrane is called as intermembrane space. It has the matrix. Mitochondria are regarded as powerhouses of the cell because they produce ATP. The matrix of the mitochondria contains the enzymes which are required for the metabolic reactions of carbohydrate, amino acid and lipids. This is the center for cellular respiration and energy metabolism. The, compon the components of electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation are buried in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The ATPs which are synthesized in the mitochondria, they are exported to the cells for the cellular work. Let's see the relationship between the mitochondria and lipid metabolism. When we talk about lipid metabolism, Fatty acid is the main thing because fatty acids are an energy rich molecule. When these fatty acids undergo series of metabolic reactions, they finally completely gets oxidized and forms carbon dioxide and water. The reducing equivalents which are produced during this metabolic reactions are transported to NAD plus and FAD to form NADH plus H plus and FADH2. These enter the electron transport chain and finally ATPs are generated. I will repeat, the energy rich fatty acids, they undergoes series of metabolic reaction, gets completely oxidized and forms carbon dioxide and water. During this process, Reducing equivalents are generated which are transported to the coenzymes NAD plus and FAD to form NADH and FADH2 which enters the ATC and forms the ATPs. The fatty acids can be classified depending upon their carbon atoms into short chain, medium chain, long chain and very long chain fatty acid. Short chain fatty acids, they have carbon atom between 2 to 6. The medium chain fatty acids, they have carbon atoms between 8 to 14. Long chain fatty acids, they have carbon atom between 16 to 22. Those fatty acids which have carbon atom more than 22 are called as very long chain fatty acid. This is the structure of fatty acid. It has a carboxyl group as well as methyl group. The carbon atom next to the carboxyl group is called as alpha carbon. Next to alpha carbon there is beta, gamma and so on. If you start numbering from the methyl group then it is omega 1. Since there are different positions, when the fatty acid undergo oxidation there are different types of oxidation alpha oxidation, beta oxidation and omega oxidation. Today we will discuss only the beta oxidation. When fatty acid undergoes oxidation, the final product formed is acetyl-CoA. Fatty acid synthesis starts from acetyl-CoA. The first material of fatty acid synthesis and end product of fatty acid oxidation both are same 
but the interesting fact that the reactions are not just the reverse coming to the definition of beta oxidation of fatty acid beta oxidation means it is the oxidation of fatty acids in which two carbon fragments are successively removed at the beta position from carboxyl end beta oxidation means it is the oxidation of the fatty acid in which two carbon fragments are successively removed at the beta position from the carboxyl end there are three stages in beta oxidation stage 1 it is the activation of fatty acid which takes place in the cytosol stage 2 is the transport of fatty acid from the cytosol to the mitochondria stage 3 the reactions of beta oxidation proper in the mitochondria the three stages of beta oxidation are activation of fatty acid in the cytosol transport of fatty acid from the cytosol to the mitochondria and finally the reactions of beta oxidation in the mitochondria the requirements for beta oxidation are the major reactions takes place in the mitochondria the starting material for beta oxidations are fatty acids the coenzyme required for the reactions are nad plus and fad beta oxidation takes place in all the cell except for brain erythrocyte and adrenal medulla these are the areas which cannot utilize fatty acid for the energy requirement the stage 1 of beta oxidation is the activation of fatty acid in this fatty acid gets condenses with coenzyme a with the help of enzyme thiokinase or also called as fatty acyl coa synthetase in this reaction it utilizes atp atp gets hydrolyzed into amp and pyrophosphate since pyrophosphate is a high energy component the atp utilization is equal to 2 atps this pyrophosphate immediately undergoes hydrolysis to form inorganic phosphate thus it drives this reaction forward and makes this reaction irreversible the activated fatty acyl coa then gets transported from the cytosol to the mitochondria coming to stage 2 of beta oxidation the short chain fatty acid and the medium chain fatty acid does not require a transport because they can enter the inner mitochondrial membrane whereas long chain fatty acid it cannot enter the inner mitochondrial membrane therefore it require transport the transport is carnitin there are two enzymes which help in this transport are carnitin acyl transferase and translocase the carnitin is synthesized from two amino acid lysine and methionine carnitin is synthesized in liver and kidneys in the cytosolic site of the inner mitochondrial membrane carnitin reacts with activated fatty acyl coa with the help of enzyme carnitin acyl transferase 1 and forms coenzyme and acyl carnitin the acyl carnitin then with the help of translocase enters the inner mitochondrial membrane in the mitochondria the acyl carnitin again gets condensed with coenzyme a utilizes carnitin acyl transferase 2 enzyme and forms activated fatty acid and carnitin is released the released carnitin from the mitochondria comes back with the help of translocase to the cytosolic site for repeat reactions towards the cytosolic site the carnitin reacts with the fatty acyl coa in the presence of enzyme carnitin acyl transferase 1 to form acyl carnitin acyl carnitin then enters the mitochondria with the help of translocase in the mitochondria the mitochondrial coenzyme a 
reacts with acyl carnitine forms the activated fatty acid that is acyl coenzyme A and carnitine is released coming to the last stage of beta oxidation which which are the reactions of beta oxidation taking place in the mitochondria there are four steps in beta oxidation reactions oxidation hydration oxidation and cleavage the cleavage is with the help of enzyme thiolase i have given the mnemonic as o hot o stands for oxidation h stands for hydration o stands for oxidation again and t stands for the cleavage enzyme thiolase let's see the reactions to explain the beta oxidation i will take an example of long chain fatty acid here i have taken palmitic acid which is made up of 16 carbon it has a methyl group and it has a carboxyl group the carbon atom which is adjacent to the carboxyl group is called as alpha carbon atom the next to it is the beta carbon atom in the cytosol when the fatty acid undergoes oxidation what happens the carboxyl end gets activated with the help of coenzyme a and forms activated fatty acid as i already told there are four reaction the first reaction is oxidation in this the coenzyme used is fad this is an fad linked dehydrogenase reaction where the fad gets reduced into fa dh2 the two hydrogen atoms are taken up from the alpha and the beta position to form alpha beta unsaturated fatty acid i will take all this as r it is for easy representation so one hydrogen from the alpha position and one hydrogen from the beta position are taken up by fad and gets converted into fadh2 in the next reaction the hydratase enzyme acts for the there is addition of water in this the oh group of water gets attached to the beta position and hydrogen atom to the alpha position to form beta hydroxy fatty acid coe the hydroxyl group from the water is added to beta position then another hydrogen atom is added to alpha position and it forms beta hydroxy fatty acid coa the third reaction is oxidation again this is nad linked oxidation in this reaction nad plus gets reduced into nadh plus h plus nad plus takes two hydrogen atom both from the beta position to form beta keto acyl coe so what happens here is 
the two hydrogen from the beta position are removed so only keto group is left out the last enzyme is thiolase that is the cleavage reaction this thiolase now cleaves the bond between the alpha and the beta position the product which is formed here is acetyl coa and now the long chain fatty acid is left out with two carbon atom lesser than its original carbon atom here we have taken the palmitic acid as an example which contains 16 carbon atom so at the end of this reaction the palmitic acid is now left out with 14 carbon atom now the left out fatty acyl coa further undergoes the same four reactions and this reaction repeats until the fatty acid is completely oxidized coming to the energetics palmitic acid which is made up of 16 carbon atom is a long chain fatty acid it undergoes seven cycles of beta oxidation to completely get oxidized at the end of this beta oxidation eight acetyl coa are synthesized this acetyl coa enters the tca cycle and each cycle of tca produces 10 atps here there are eight cycles ATPs are produced. Seven FADH2 are produced in the seven cycle of beta oxidation. These FADH2 enters the electron transport chain. Each molecule of FADH2 gives 1.5 ATPs. At the end of the beta oxidation, 10.5 ATPs are produced. Seven NADH are also produced at the end of seven cycles of beta oxidation which enters the etc each molecule of nadh gives 2.5 atps therefore 17.5 atps are generated so total atps which are generated at the end of beta oxidation of palmitic acid are 108 atps however in the first reaction that is activation of fatty acid two atps are utilized therefore the net yield after the beta oxidation of palmitic acid is 106 atps how this beta oxidation gets regulated it mainly depends upon the energy status next one is hormone insulin inhibits the fatty acid oxidation whereas glucagon increases the fatty acid oxidation the melanoil coa it inhibits the enzyme carnitin acyl transferase 1 and prevents the transport of activated fatty acid inside the mitochondria thus melanoil coa blocks the beta oxidation why this beta oxidation is so important what are the clinical aspects of beta oxidation there are three important deficiencies carnitin deficiency the two enzyme deficiency they are carnitin acyl transferase 1 or carnitin palmitoyl transferase 1 carnitin acyl transferase 2 or carnitin palmitoyl transferase 2 carnitin deficiencies are usually seen in premature babies due to inadequate synthesis if there is renal leakage there is more loss of amino acid thus carnitin is not synthesized if there are patients going for hemodialysis or organic acidurias carnitin production is less so this carnitin deficiency leads to decreased gluconeogenesis therefore there is hypoglycemia carnitin deficiency can be treated by oral supplementation of carnitin 
The second clinical aspect is carnitin palmitoyl transferase 1. It is an inherited disorder which mainly affects the liver. The important symptom here is hypoglycemia. If there is deficiency of carnitin palmitoyl transferase 2, it mainly affects the muscle. In severe condition, it can also affect the liver. The main symptom is hypoglycemia. The important disease whenever there is medium fatty acids are involved that is SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. As the name suggests, it is the sudden unexpected death of apparently healthy infant. The incidence of this disease is 1 in 10,000 births. The deficiency is mainly seen in medium chain acyl CoE dehydrogenase which is the first enzyme of beta oxidation. Sudden infant death syndrome as the name suggests it is the sudden unexpected death. What happens in this disease is babies will not get the feed for 12 hours or more which leads to hypoglycemia. When carbohydrates are utilized, the fatty acid comes into the picture. Since the first enzyme of beta oxidation is deficient, fatty acid does not meet the energy requirement leading to the sudden death. The second disease is Jamaican omitting sickness. This is seen when eating the unripe aki fruit. The unripe aki fruit contains the unusual toxic amino acid that is hypoglycin A. Hypoglycin is the unusual toxic amino acid. This hypoglycin A inhibits the acyl-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme which is the first enzyme of the beta oxidation thus it blocks the beta oxidation leading to hypoglycemia, vomiting, convulsion, coma and death. So let's review what we have learned today. We have learned what is what are the roles of mitochondria, what is the link between mitochondria and beta oxidation. There are three stages in beta oxidation, activation of fatty acid in the cytosol, transport of activated fatty acid from the cytosol to the mitochondria and finally beta oxidation reactions. For short chain and medium chain fatty acid, carnitine is not required as a transport whereas for long chain fatty acid, carnitine is required as a transport. Once the activated fatty acids are inside the mitochondria, there are four reactions. They are oxidation, hydration, oxidation and finally cleavage with the help of enzyme thiolase. These four reactions takes place repeatedly until the fatty acid is completely oxidized. At the end of palmitic acid oxidation, 106 ATPs are generated. There is an enormous production of ATP at the end of beta oxidation. Finally, we explain the clinical aspects of beta oxidation in that two important diseases are SIDS and Jamaican omitting sickness. Thank you.